so what I what I want to know first, guys, is uh, why do we have so few likes on the stream? <laughs> this is this is my very first concern. But uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to an episode of uh, the Ark, where we discuss the most burning Chad-like topics in the world of Lost Ark. Let me just quickly move myself under my guests because this is how it is polite, right? There we go, me and Wilkie, uh, right here at the bottom. Um, nice to see you, everyone. And uh, welcome also to my guests, uh, Lino, Omni, and Wilkie. You guys already know these people. I don't have to, you know, talk about them very much. Their, their details are in the description of this video. I highly recommend that you guys give them, um, give them a view, give them a subscribe, watch them because they each of them have interesting stuff to say. Quite frankly, all of the guests on my podcast have interesting stuff to say. And uh, not to mention that Lino now has actually a microphone. He's not speaking in his, um, in his uh, fish tank anymore. Go ahead, Lino. Show off. All right, all right. I guess I'll show off the Shure SM7B that I got myself after a very Ooh. nice comment from yourself, <laughs> Silo, where um, <laughs> you uh, you got me in a Discord call for a little video, and then you're like, "My God, Lim, your mic is terrible." The the amount of EQ that I had to do on it, and I was like, "You know what? You're not Silo's right." I have there to you give go. Something a little bit better, and here we go. Guys, welcome. Uh, very nice to have you. So during the show, in case you're new to my channel or new to my podcast, um, during the show, we're also going to be answering questions, your questions, just like this. We're going to place them on the screen. So if you have uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, post them, but not just right now, because first I want to show you a couple of things. Mm, we're going to discuss the server situation here. Here we go. Just give me a second just to bring these these things up because I have them right here. Um, there we go. I am going to bring up the server situation so we can see exactly where are we standing um, in terms of of um, of uh, servers. Yeah, here we go. This is this is where we're, this is what we're looking at right now. We are looking right here on the right hand side. Let's just make this full screen. Right here on the right hand side. This is this is the EU version. For those of you who were curious, we have um, we have Chadan, which is a meme by now. I apologize. I hope you like the meme at the beginning. I'm planning to post it on Twitter. So um, just to make a little bit more fuss with Chadan, we have Kadan at 30% of uh, of the guilds and people that know about this spreadsheet. This is important to actually keep in mind. Um, because there's many other people who don't know about this and haven't voted here. Then we have, surprisingly, Way has caught up a lot of steam in Europe. Then Trixion has lost a lot of steam compared to the to to um, earlier this week when it was like half and half with Kadan. Then we have Asta who has caught up steam, Zinnervale and Neira. So it seems to me that already we're starting to look like a pretty nice pie chart in Europe, right here in the top. I will share this spreadsheet uh, with you. Actually, one of my guests, do you guys have this spreadsheet? I actually gave it here in the private chat that we have. Maybe one of you can share it in the chat so that people would also maybe bookmark it and keep track. Sure. Is that okay? Yeah? Okay. Um, what, what, what do you guys think about this? Um, what are your thoughts about this? I mean, um, I feel that I may be partly to blame for uh, for some of it too with the uh, the the Kadan the Kadan announcement with the uh, uh, I was talking to a lot of the people in the like the Lost Doctor score the the unofficial one the community one where we wanted to try and get like sort of a server for a lot of the PVP vets and it was either we wait until all the regionals pick their servers or we make an early announcement and hopefully dissuade the regionals from from picking it and Kadan was a, a pretty historical choice because first of all we Europeans stole that server from the North Americans right so Kadan used to be a server in the beta that was in NA East. <laughs> and as EU people actually joined that server from them. So clearly, you know, doing a little bit of a, a stealing the server. And also for people that are in the PvP community, the Archives Arena tournament that we had during the beta was in the Kadan. Like it was hosted, you know, NA East. And uh, most people were going like it was meant to be in the Kadan server, etc. Of course, custom matches are something that you can. Uh, it's something that's cross server. It's not something that's server specific. Uh, but Kadan was kind of the server that everybody started in and where that tournament was initially hosted in, right? So we thought, hey, let's let's push Kadan as the like PvP-oriented kind of international server. 
unfortunately, the Chadan memes that started propping up from Kadan ended up being very, very popular. <laughs> and now Kadan <laughs> seems to have become the leading server for Europe, which is a uh, which is the situation we that we see now. Okay. What's your thoughts, Wilkie, on this? Will 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 Chadan still keep its popularity as we get closer to next week, or do you think that any of the other ones? I'm actually quite surprised and quite happy that uh, that uh, Way has caught up some traction. Asta, Zinner, Vale. What about you, Wilkie? Mm, I'm I'm fairly content that the distribution will even out even more, um, since people probably at least some people have seen what Amazon is capable or not capable of doing with their servers uh, going over from the world. And I think people just want to play the game. And obviously, they want to try and play with their friends. But since most of the content is cross-server anyway, I'm fairly certain that guilds are going to move to specific servers. Then there's all the regional or national kind of servers, which aren't officially flagged. I think the Spanish community is like jumping servers every two days. They used to be Kadan, now they're way. At the start, they were a different th server, I think, or something. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm fairly certain there's going to be like a a split between the community, and at some point, people will just even out. It's obviously not going to be like a fifteen point eight percentage, but I think I think Kadan will still lose some people. But okay, that's uh, we. We have here um, uh, the server distribution in terms of uh, of uh, nationalities. We have on Neira, mm, most players there are Italian, or at least most guilds, excuse me. This is guilds, right? Not players. So most guilds, Italian, and then Polish also on Neira, eight guilds. We have a couple of German guilds as well, a few English guilds. Listen, guys, just saying f for those of you who are new to know, in Lost Ark, it doesn't really matter what nationality you are. It's the same mechanics. You know what I'm saying? So you're not going to LFG chat and be bad. We played in Russia and Korea for three goddamn years. It, you know, it's fine. It's going to work out. Kadan, mostly English. There's no other nationalities. Trixion, we have mostly Spanish and then a bit of French, a bit of English, which is great. Calvasus, nobody is playing in Calvasus. So if you want a server just for yourself, all of the world bosses and all of the good loot, Calvasus is for you. Uh, Thyrene, only one guild and that's English. So guess what? They're going to recruit you because if you're the only person there with them. Um, then we have Zinnervale, 14 English guilds. Now, this is an English server, if I've seen any, um, right? Asta, we have many German guilds, 21 at that. And then on way, we have 23 Spanish guilds, right? God bless, uh, I didn't go on way. Uh, Sten, Slen, nobody likes Slen either. So Slen and Calvasus, you're going to get all of the nice goody world bosses on islands. Let's check the situation in NA East and also talk to Omni a little bit ab um, about it. So we have Azina 42, I'm not surprised. Uh, yeah. Regulus uh, 22 guilds, Una 22 guilds, and a little bit of Avesta 10 guilds. Do, yeah, you, so think, and do you think Azina is going to grow more, Omni? Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely going to keep growing. Uh, Azina is going to be sort of the equivalent of Shadan on NA East. Shadan. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely stacking up to be the competitive GVG and PVP server. So the guild I'm joining is stacked with PVP elites that participated in the tournament. And there's other competing guilds that are also joining for the same reason to be competitive and the other servers, Una and Regulus, are more uh, populated by guilds and players that want to avoid the chaos that Azina seems to be shaping up to be, and they want to have a more relaxed experience without potential chaos. Mm -hmm. All right. And in terms of... Uh, of um, um... Actually, we don't have them here sorted by. Uh, there's very few. There, there are also nationalities in 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 uh, NA, right? Because mm -hmm. there's uh, very many people from all sorts of ethnicities there. Um, however, most of them are English. 88 guilds, which is 84 percent of the guilds that have signed up on this spreadsheet to be remembered, um, are actually guilds. Someone was asking who is Saiva, the bald guy. Well, there's two bald people here. One of them actually shaves and takes care of himself, which is Omni. And the other one is me right here, uh, which does not shave, but is still bald. I'm planning to actually grow a little Japanese uh, ponytail before I actually lose all of my hair. Um, 
requires a lot of editing work in my videos to actually appear as uh, much here as I have. NA West, we have here the server count, NA West. Uh, we have Envishka on 3.3%. Valtan, I'm, ac I'm absolutely not surprised. I think if, if this name would come to Europe, it would be the same situation. Um, Valtan and then Mari, 35%. Um, yeah, PVX <laughs> on, on, a, on NA West, um, 96% of the guilds are PvP and PV PvE. And then there is also two guilds that are full PvE. Um, pretty interesting, right? What do you think, guys? NA, NA West, all good? For NA West, I think it was Valton was picked as a server for um, Oceanic players, which I think is why it's also so popular. Um, correct me if I'm wrong here. So I think it's why a lot of the Oceania players, which unfortunately do not have their own server as of yet, at the very least, will probably be flocking to, to Valtan. So that seems to be one of the more popular servers for NA West. Um, with a lot of, well, NA players in general going to NA East, we can see a big difference in server sizes just in general by the number of guilds they're applying to. We have one Mandarin-speaking guild. Of course, many languages here, but this is absolutely gorgeous uh, for me to see. One Chinese-speaking guild as well, which is fabulous. Um, amazing, amazing, amazing distribution in, in NA East. Let me just quickly check NA West as well. Uh, American. Is American a different language than English? Do they mean Native American people or uh, Omni? I have no idea what they mean by American. Maybe they mean people with broken English and I don't know. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Omni Flaming, his own kind here live on my podcast. Uh, we have Spanish, Mandarin again here on, on, on NA East as well. Very interesting. Portuguese, Brazilian, Chinese, two, uh, two Korean guilds here as well. I'm not surprised they are closer to Korea. And one French guild, because you know what? There are actually French-speaking people in NA, especially in Canada. They have a lot of uh, French-speaking people. South America, we have Agaton and Caseros. This is a pretty uh, a balanced, let's say, spread in South America. Um, and we have Portuguese. English, Spanish, English, Portuguese, Spanish, Portuguese, Brazilian. God damn, there's so many variations of 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 like Spanish, right? Uh, which is is the case. Um, and that's about it. These were the server things. Um, so far, I believe um, looks pretty decent in my opinion. Nothing, uh, nothing special. I'm happy the situation on Europe has been balanced itself out as well. Um, Cool. What are you guys saying in the chat? Um, um, if you have any questions, I'm uh, happy to. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, by the way, for the 20 euro donation. Um, very appreciated. One more new member applied before I we started the stream. Americans from the hood. <laughs> okay. Uh, One guy said nice. British. <laughs> One guy said British versus American English. So that's that's probably the, the difference there. <laughs> okay. Um, I wanted to make a poll on the server names, but there's just too many regions for me to make a poll on each region. And I just don't have time to stop talking and make polls. Now I apologize that I wasn't better prepared before. Um, the memes with Chadan, you've seen, are there any NA memes, uh, Omni? NA memes, there's plenty. I mean, <laughs> Chadan starting with, with that one. And then uh, Azina is shaping up to be the the lady in NA East that's going to crush everybody else, at least as, as far as population goes. What, what are and, we uh, thinking? What are we thinking? Omni, sorry to cut you out. What are we thinking no, about queues, Omni? Um, I'm, I'm very NA. concerned. I'm very concerned, especially in NA East, because right now, if you notice that chart is looking like we're Shadan plus another server. Um, so there is no so Shadan. On the I mean, I'm Kadan. All right, fine. I'll call it no, Kadan. No, no Kadan either in NA East. <laughs> no, I'm saying like compared to the UNA Kadan, ah, comparing right. the two charts, the NA East Azina to the NA uh, to the EU Kadan, it's a, a bigger pie. So um, I think in NA East, maybe not so much of an issue as far as login queues on the 8th, but February 11th should be interesting. And they announced the server resets will be on Thursdays. So anybody who signed in on the 8th, if, if they take the servers down on, on Thursday, yeah, that's going to be interesting. People rushing right back in to, to get their, their space. 
what are we thinking about uh, EU guys I mean, Q, quite... in terms of queues? I'm pleasantly surprised, right? I thought that, you know, we'd see Kadan. Uh, at first, you know, we had like Trixin kind of taking the lead and then we had all these different issues like the, the regionals and picking their different servers and people finally kind of settling what servers they're going to go. Um, I was actually pleasantly surprised to, to look at the the graph today and saw that, wait, Kadan is actually, it is the, the biggest server, but not by a lot. Um, as Omni was saying, right? You look at Azena and NA East and that's much bigger than Kadan is currently. So at first I was going to be very concerned when it comes to... Like maybe Qs and Kadan would be very heavy or something of the sort. But seeing the split right now that's going on in Europe, I guess it's the advantage that we have for having so many different languages, right? So you have different regional servers picking different locations. So in that regard, we may have uh, Qs alleviate a little. But my real concern to Qs is going to be which server is going to get placed at the top of the list. Because here we are all discussing what these servers are going to be and who's going to be joining. Realistically, we're like 0.9% or something of the player base. I right? probably don't even break like Two percent of the total player base that's going to be within that game. So whichever server gets placed at the top is whichever server most of the new players are going to be clicking on. So if they have it like the list that they released when they made the, the announcement, the area would be that one. But I don't think it will be like that. If it's alphabetical, then maybe Asta. Right now, we just have to wait and see. Whichever server's at the top is the one that's going to have a lot of danger when it comes to logging in. Yeah, this is the list. Um, actually, nobody can see the list right now because I don't share my screen, but uh, here we go. Uh, this is the list that that we have. Let's make it full screen. So for EU, we have uh, Neria at the top and then Kadan, Trixion. Kadan is second. So I, you know, we're not out of the woods yet. That's what I'm saying. I mean, not sure, because if you think about it, right? If you just want to play the game, you pick the first server. If you want to dodge queues, do you pick the second server? Of course not. You pick like a middle server, you pick the bottom server. Slen, so, yeah. With, yeah. Yeah. So if you want to dodge queues, you pick Slen. And most people, so you know, either you pick the first or you pick the last is the, the way that I tend, tend to do it. Or if I'm really trying to, you know, game and uh, pretend that I'm intelligent, I'll pick like a second to last server or something. To Very have... important to note that uh, Amazon did say that they're considering... Yeah, they're considering adding regional tags to the servers. So some of them might become French, uh, Spanish, uh, German, etc. This is to be considered, and we're gonna have to see actually next week what's going to happen. Uh, Wilkie, what, what 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 do you think if 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 uh, if if your guild or your yourself you yourself decide to go on a server, uh, but then it's completely jam packed with a queue? Are you gonna change servers to go to Slen? and play in that one guild that was there. Well, hopefully my server is not going to be jammed with a queue, and um, this may sound a bit ego here, but since I have a couple days booked off, I can probably log onto any server even if there are queues, because uh, I can just wake up my normal schedule like very early in the morning and hop onto the server and just never log out. So um, the poor souls who didn't take the days off or who don't want to take they can't take the days off or something they come home after like a long day at work and they're like hmm now i'm sitting in a two hours queue that's kind of bummer the good thing about or the beauty about lost ark is though those people can just play on a different server and have pretty much the exact same experience that we do so mm -hmm. unless they have like a reason to join one specific server because their friends or the guild is there then I don't think queues are going to be such a big deal. But I also think that every server is going to have queues regardless of uh, which selection we do, because uh, I'm not sure how Amazon sized them. If they actually sized them correctly this time, mm -hmm. then we might not have queues. But if they size them the way they did with New World, the servers were going to die in a fire the first 48 hours until they like double the amount of servers. <laughs> Okay, do you think do you think that we're gonna have more problems if they do create regional servers? No, I they... think that that'll actually solve problems because that'll that'll also kind of create like an English or international server, right? Yeah, and full um, of people with full of queues. Well, not necessarily. <laughs> There's still gonna be like, let's say we have three servers that are gonna be the international one. There's still gonna be people that are gonna pick one or the other for various reasons might that be another forum post oh this is the official pvp server who knows maybe like in an oiler for those of you who are in chat oilers are essentially whales or people with a lot of money to spend in a game i've, I've been asked this question quite a while imagine like some kind of whale actually announces look we're not going to go kadan but we're actually going to go trixion for gvg and then there's all of a sudden there's like a different current going 
huh, I want to be competitive in GVG. I know these guys are whales, but that also is kind of like a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. So there's still a lot of things that could happen here. And I think it'll it'll even it out, especially with regional servers kind of like taking off some of the loads. And then it'll be it it'll never be an even spread, but I think we're gonna have fine servers once they actually announce anything. All right. I wanted to ask uh, answer a question. Do we know anything about Twitch drops? Um, I didn't understand the second part of the question. Maybe one of you smarter people uh, understands what he means. And maybe I'm just not uh, versed enough in Twitch. But I do know that there will be absolutely Twitch drops simply because not that they confirmed anything or maybe they did and I'm just not aware, but uh, simply because they are, they are actually planning a sort of a, a legends or heroes of uh, Lost Ark where they invite like uh, six or 16 streamers uh, on Twitch and they give them access to the games, S similar to what New World had, what they did with New World, where they did like three faction realm battles with 66 streamers, right? 32 per, or 20, whatever is the split, um, 22 per, uh, per, uh, per uh, faction. So they're gonna do the same with Lost Ark. I'm not quite sure where, maybe on an island or maybe arena or maybe whatever. And those are going to have drops enabled. So at least those six or 16 um, lucky content creators that were invited to this uh, from all sorts of nationalities, most of them from outside of the Lost Ark old hub, uh, but there are some old ones as well. Uh, then there will be uh, drops as well. Um, any I other question? I can drops if you want. Uh, not not the, the, with the drops I'm familiar, but with the oh, whole okay, okay. Uh, the whole uh, Tarkov and uh, oh, the, uh, yeah. automatic system could overload yeah. this. I didn't really understand. Um, any other questions that you guys have noticed in the chat that we can answer in this in this uh, little break here? I mean, there was one where people were just asking, "What does server actually like matter? What does it do?" Right. And let's do it. yeah, I think just to explain servers don't do that much for Lost Ark, if I'm going to be entirely honest. Um, so most of the content can be accessed um, cross-server matching. So cross-server matching is possible. Uh, cross-region matching is not. So, you know, like NA East and NA West are not going to be able to play together. But everyone within are a specific you sure? region... Are you sure, though? This is am, a big concern. I am pretty sure. Like, it's it's a region, right? That's what you can say. It's like yeah. that's the difference between Korea and Russia or, you know, yeah. Japan and Russia, right? So they they may be, be published by the same people, but... Like when you're connecting to the server, right? When you have a specific ping, you have to connect to a server. This is a server-based game, so you can't, you're not going to be able to have like um, different people on like an entirely different region, um, kind of interacting with each other. It's um, that's why the community was in uproar. The why are you splitting America into two regions in the first place? Why not fuse them from the start? And it was they the have to do argument. something about this. Yeah, it's yeah, very strange. Because... Mm -hmm. no, the whole argument is, was like people value their ping, but then at the same time you're splitting the nation in half. So this yeah. is yeah, this is this is actually uh, not good at all. Um, yeah, not good at all in my opinion. And uh, who knows? How do you know that NA West is is going to get enough people, or what, which was the smaller one? NA West. Yeah, it was NA West. Yeah, we we, we don't know, right? Yeah. Um, it is a splitting. It's also like they did kept Europe as one region as opposed to NA, SR, EU East and EU West, but then they split NA. So there's a whole discussion when it comes to that. But at the very least, when it comes to the servers that you're playing on, um, those servers you can cross match. You can do pretty much all the PVE content cross server, uh, PVP queues as well. So the queue that you do get matched on for PVP is cross server too. The only things where server matters is like local events of so things like islands, things like GVG, which is something that's server based, the upcoming row end continent, which is going to be faction versus faction PVP. That's also going to be server based. And the final thing is just partying up with your teammates. So you can create cross server parties. There is, you know, a, a kind of party finder party making system, but there are certain bits of content where you have to make a local parties within the server. And for that, I think the only things that are affected would be unranked PVP. So if you want to play casuals with your friends, you want to play the command game mode, and I believe Chaos Dungeons. And I think these are the only things that are affected by server where you need to queue up with somebody in a single server. So most of the content in Lost Ark is cross-server, and you don't really face too much risk. It's just if you want to be able to party up for unranked PvP and like do the GVG rowing continent and just see people walking out and about in the same regions. Yeah, so uh, another question about guild names. Yes, so for they are per region as much as I saw from Russia and Korea. Uh, if I take a name Saivo on, on a server, I cannot take another Saivo on another server. Uh, what about PvP duo rank? 
not gonna happen, at least not in the near future, but with the proper feedback, anything is possible in Lost Ark. And I mean this, anything is possible if there is enough feedback for it, they will actually do it, same as they're gonna do, for example, a 1v1 pure arena, right? Um, so uh, that's very nice. Is economy cross-server, Wilkie? Yes, it is. So regardless of any of the servers you are on, you're going to have the same auction house. So you're not going to have a material shortage or accessory shortage uh, because all of the EU servers, all of the NA East and all of the NA West servers are going to be connected. Same thing here, though, like they're, they're not cross region. So, for example, NA East and NA West auction houses are going to differ which uh, just leads into the initial kind of like problem. Why would they do that in the first place? And why not have those things linked together? Because it would make the life of pretty much everybody on any NA server easier. Um, but yeah, it's it's cross server. So regardless of the server you're going to be playing, you will have access to the same marketplace, to the same auction house. It's the um, one thing that concerns a lot of players that were friends, for example, those that you were playing with in the RU server was not being able to add each other to the friends list if you're on separate servers, even if you're on the same region. So while you can like coordinate on Discord to do a party finder and then like, oh, I set up my room, you can join it, even if you're in another server. If you can't add them to friends, you can't do it directly from the game. So mm -hmm. you have to like tell them, hey, room name is this, join that, you know? One thing I should add, though, is that there is a, um, if anyone like that's played Final Fantasy, Link Shell system. So it's like a, a way of chatting with people between servers, which is uh, available in Korea. I'm not sure if we're going to be having that on release for NAEU. It remains to be seen. But they do have a system in place already, at the very least in the Korean region, which lets people yeah. communicate with each other via chat cross-server. It's just whether or not we're going to be having that, I believe. It's called Mokoko chat, right? Something yeah, like something that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um... Okay, perfect. Uh, there's a more question. We're gonna we're gonna answer uh, a lot more questions as as we uh, as we go on. I also wanted to talk about um, about um, about uh, a little bit about the founders packs. Yeah, uh, just to uh, to show them to you guys uh, because um, after all, I I am a shield, so I need to sell founders packs. I'm joking, of course. I am absolutely joking. For those of you who are new, sometimes I have these dry, really bad jokes. Uh, however. Uh, let me just quickly share with you some Founders Packs things. Uh, the Archives. The Archives website. The Archives. The Archives website. Where is it? I cannot even find it. Uh, how is it called? Um, I'll get it for you. Lost Archive. Lost Lost Archive. Lo right. Lost Archive. This is the one. So Lost Archive had recently um, um, a model viewer for uh, the 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 cosmetics that we're getting in the uh, founders packs in case you didn't know i am going to link you this in chat right now um this is the mount that we're getting um let me just check if you guys can see yeah you can see so the mount that we're getting this is in the white color uh, you can preview it here and every other cosmetic apparently these cosmetics were found on the russian servers so if any of you could tell me how in the world do these cosmetics exist on the Russian servers? And how does someone that works for Lost Archive manage to think to look in the Russian client for these things while I show people these cosmetics in different colors? I mean, data miners are going to be data mining. It doesn't matter when, it doesn't matter where. You cannot stop the data miner. They are a force of nature. And um, when it comes to wider on the Russian server, we have seen a lot of cross-server things happen. So, for example, Russia actually came out with the... They had, like, exclusive costume set that they had in, like, the kind of like the dark, fiery, skeleton-looking costume set it was originally exclusive to Russia, but then that got released in Korea, for example. So I think there are a lot of region-exclusive things that we may have in an AEU that will eventually find its way into Russia and Korea, and vice versa as well. So I think it's it's kind of expected at this point. Wait a second. So you're telling me that it's expected that the unique stuff that's made for me is going to be in Russia and Korea? Hell no! I mean... Then I'm not buying any Founders <laughs> Packs! I'm on a refund. <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly certain we're going to see those mounts eventually surface on the other servers. For sure. I want, no what do you mean? Them. And, you, and you guys are okay with this? Yeah, it's on another server. Why Why should I deny, you know, some Korean or Russian player for getting a cool mount? Like, they had their own kind of exclusive Founders Packs one. Like, the Russian Founders Packs, if I recall correctly, had this weird-ass, this car with legs. It's amazing. I love that. And yeah, if, yeah. If, 
if me denying them a three-headed wolf means that I get denied a car of legs, then that is not a fair trade to me. I definitely want a car of legs. So I think it's fair for everybody to have access to everything eventually at some point. I mean, yeah, okay, in our they, region, they, it'll be... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, in our region, it's probably going to be called the Northern Lawmaker Avatar. And in their region, the, they'll call it like the Valhalla Pack or something where it's totally not even the, the same stuff across the board. And, and they'll just rename it, rebrand it, ship it. Yeah, but it, it doesn't matter if it's if it's like renamed. I thought that this is just for me. I thought that this is... I promoted this that as being just for me. It's just for EUNNA founders within EUNNA, is what I would say. Yeah, okay. and then in Russia, and then in Japan, and then in Korea. Oh, I'd rather have the exclusive stuff that they have too, instead of uh, us just having the scraps. So I think it's a fair trade. I see. So you agree and with this also? We shouldn't segregate will be. each other. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm not surprised that they do this, because, like, having exclusive exclusive stuff on that way is is not going to happen unless the na and eu servers are somehow magically the biggest servers and even then they they put the money down they develop those things and they're going to make them exclusive timely like we had the same in russia right we had the fatranian knights like the 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 founders or the pre-order packages and at some point later down the line they got released in korea just like we're going to get korean outfits in russia or in the western servers so they're not going to be exclusive to their region as well um mm -hmm. i i mean i get i get your point you you thought this is going to be like you're going to be unique because we're the only region that's going to have them but i don't think that's ever going to be the case i see Unless okay like when they... europe yeah yeah I'm just Sometimes uh... when you do a console oh go ahead sorry just a little bit disappointed um, um, that uh, I'm not going to be unique in this particular sense. But hey, it is what it is. I think this is a fair argument, actually, that I also want some stuff that's in Korea. However, I do believe that many things that are in Korea will actually not make their way here over to the West. Uh, and I thought that at least for these uh, founders packs thing, they can just stay as just for us. Um, but yeah, um, okay. I, I actually even recorded yesterday a video about the funders pack uh, and I actually said that this is, these are made specifically for us. And I guess that's not wrong because they are made for us, but they're just going to come there later if you guys are so sure about it. Um, in uh, any, any, I wanted to ask you guys also since we're here live, any of these funders why do I keep uh, removing myself from the stream? Any of these founders packs that you guys think are a very good value? Very easy answer for me. I, you know, to me, fashion is the end game. You have to look well. If you're not winning in style, you're not winning. So to me, the platinum is obviously the best value because I get two costumes. Easy. <laughs> no uh, argument there. Cool. All right. Wilkie, what, what founder well, is the best for you? Uh, well, for me personally, all of them are good. Um, because yes, I actually have all of them except for the bronze one. Because back when when I uh, put the money down the line, we didn't have the bronze pack. This is something they added down later to kind of like have the the low budget option for people that still want to commit to the game but don't want to spend as much money, which is an absolutely valid point. I think in terms of value, though, the the gold one is actually the best one. It gets you pretty well decked out. You get an outfit. You get a pretty good box, which. The box is probably overhyped in, in conjunction to everything else that was in it, but it's still going to help you a little bit. So mm -hmm. I think if you really want to look for value, gold pack it is. Um, mm -hmm. But Lin has a fair point. Fashion is the ultimate end game. So if you are a sucker for fashion, and while, while we, we're not going to have exclusive, exclusive outfits on our server, the outfits that are going to be in those founders packs might never be available otherwise. So if that's it, something you're interested in, you got to get them now. Yeah. And Omni, you, I, I, I bet you, you've purchased uh, two platinums, two golds. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I got a platinum, a gold, and uh, I agree with both comments uh, from Wilkie and, and Lynn. Um, but I do agree that the gold probably has the most value overall uh, because platinum just starts to add on a little more uh, pizzazz it gives you a little more like oh here's a locomotive for your estate and here's this special thing over here like uh, a, a, a special like background for your character like a backdrop 
one of those okay, so you, so none of you guys care about the mount. None of you care about the wallpaper. The Am wallpaper is kind of cool, actually. I do like the wallpaper. I it's one of the things that I haven't done too much in Russia, which is like collecting the wallpapers and and playing playing house, I guess, with the character select screen. But I'm kind of kind of excited for the wallpaper for the platinum pack. Actually, I, I will I will play the the collector when it comes to all of these these wallpapers once NA and EU gets released. Yeah, I, I and I also think that these four thousand crystals, which we believe at the moment to be the equivalent of forty dollars, um, is is actually of mega value in terms of buying a gold pack because you pay fifty, you get forty back basically with cash up yeah. currency, and the other things in the gold cost you ten dollars, while in the silver you get ten dollars back, and the other things in the silver, which are less than in the gold cost you $15, right? So if you're willing to spend more, then gold is uh, actually of mega value in terms of raw dollar per what you get. But the platinum, uh, I mean, it has the wallpaper and that's all I'm going to say. Um, <laughs> okay, cool. What else? Um, have you guys seen any questions? By the way, this is how, why I do my podcast so I can have my guests read the chat and tell me questions at one point. Yeah, one one asked if we get the amazing skins um, in, in Just of Platinum. You actually get the Northern Lawmaker avatar in the gold and in the platinum. And then in the platinum, you get an additional one, which is the Founders Pack that uh, avatars that Lynn was talking about, the, the fashion endgame ones. Right. Um, I also wanted to ask you guys a question that was asked several times. What servers are you guys going to go on? I'm going on, on Chudan, at least that's the first priority. Yeah, so as for myself, I was the one that made the forum post and the Twitter post and pinned it on the Discord. So I don't have much of a choice now. I have to go to Dan. I, I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't. So I'm kind of locked in that server for now. And I'm... I opted in for Chidan or Kadan as well because I do actually PvP quite a bit, despite probably going to be turning into PvE Andy for as long as the first one or two months in the West. But since I am actively a part of the Wizzles community or Wizzles Guild, I'm more or less kind of bound to them. So if they were to decide to not go to Kadan, I'm in a little bit of a pinch here because I definitely have people such as Lin and uh, Saibo who are going to be playing on Kadan, and I naturally want to play with them, but I also kind of want to play with my guild. So I'm a little bit in a pinch here, which I'm obviously hoping that my guild or the Wizzles are actually going to be playing on Kadan because that'll make my decision quite easy. But um, the alternative currently in the room was Wei, but apparently Wei is going to be the Spanish server. So I think we're going to go Kadan. At least, fingers crossed that we are. Okay. And Omni? And before the podcast, I made the comment that I feel outnumbered with three Kadans and I'm the only Azina. I'm going Azina <laughs> with uh, with our PvP friends there. But uh, I'm actually going to be heavily focused on PvE as well because we don't know when GVG is coming. We don't know when like the, the true competitive PvP content is coming. So PvE is going to be fun. It's going to be great. And I also wanted to uh, read a comment that came with a $5 donation for which I'm very grateful. I do apologize. Um, do we know if joining a guild will be limited to the specific class character or if it is account wide? Limited to the specific class character. But there is an option in game where um, you can add people as friends for their whole account and you can see whatever characters they're logged in on. Another thing that I wanted to say as um, a small disappointment is that um, on this particular stream right now, there's only 343 likes and I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, um, about region lock, guys, I wanted to answer this question as well because I was invested in it since the beginning. So at the moment, there is a region lock, right? But if you want to play Lost Ark, that's not out of the question. You can ask someone at the moment to create you a Steam account because for some reason in the last week or last two weeks, three weeks, Steam has wised up to many VPNs and I've tried to create accounts, um, let's say with a VPN showing me in another region, in an allowed region. Um, and it doesn't work. It always detects it. So because of this, you can very easily ask someone to just create you an account. It takes literally two minutes on the clock um, and it's just two clicks away. 
at the moment of me saying this, the knowledge amongst the community, because there's many people that will play Lost Ark from a region locked country, they just have an account where their country is, the account country is one that's whitelisted. So that's all you need at the moment. Will you need a VPN to trick Steam later on up, upon launching the game? We don't know because we don't have the game. Um, but yeah, this is um, in, in large terms. Uh, the uh, account thing. I just wanted to mention because the, I know there's many of you who, who watch me and um, and uh, want to know this. Okay, um, Head Start. Head Start. I would like to talk about the Head Start a little bit. Um, what's the impact of the Head Start? What can you expect to to have in the Head Start? What are the pros and cons that you can think of from the top of your head in terms of the Head Start? should go first not all at the same time guys take your take right. your time take I'll it go. easy I'll guys because we don't hear each other go ahead on yeah. all right all right um one of the biggest advantages i see with the head start is uh obviously locking in your spot in the server the moment you log in the other advantage is securing those possible names that you want to secure for all your characters that's like everybody's first Number one task on their on their list for day one: secure all my names. Even though now we're restricted to only one capital letter, but I digress on that. Um, and then after you secure your characters, start playing. And then the next objective would be to push content as quickly as possible uh, for those who are the min maxers. But then the newer players, I highly recommend to just take your sweet time, enjoy the game, test all the classes. There's there's no real like crazy oh my god if I don't keep up uh, there's no FOMO I feel like if, if you start new you just have to prep at your own pace but as far as day one advantages I th I think the biggest ones are securing your spot in the server stay logged in we don't know what's gonna happen on Thursday and then secure your your character names that's the biggest ones I can think of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much in full agreement. Um, like there are people which are probably going to try and rush and do things as soon as possible before the reset, um, if they can. But um, realistically, it's it's not too much time that so people are going to have. So unless you're like really really hardcore, and even then the advances that you get are so minimal. We you know we're not even having like Legion raids and release, even though the the T3 announcement was like a a pretty big deal. Um, okay. I don't think we're going to be having anything like that on release. So we'll see. And it's. Just take the game at your own pace, honestly. Um, as Omni said, it's if you're beginning uh, the game for the first time, it's much better to actually enjoy the game and and do a lot of the side activities, a lot of the islands, get your skill points, make sure that you're ready as you as you hit cap, as opposed to just uh, bum rushing through everything. So there'll there'll be some degree of advantage, but other than name reservation, um, it's it's all right. It's only three days. Mm -hmm. All right. Someone was asking why people who uh, play in Russia at the moment, and they are people from Russia. Um, or Asia want to play on the Western release. Um, I think they want to play on Western release for very many reasons, actually. Uh, one of them being the fact that the Western release is actually going to be a popular release. Um, it's going to have a lot more players compared to Japan and uh, Russia combined and doubled by, multiplied by five. Uh, so that's one of the reasons. Any other reasons why why you guys think? Actually, I think that also uh, there's many PvP players, Lino can, can attest to this, many PvP players that are currently playing in Russia where there's like, uh, what, 600 play PvP players and they want more competition. They yeah. want to feel better in a better environment, no? Yeah, that's right. When you look at sales like Japan, in Japan, like right now, they have to literally agree one day of the week where everybody queues ranked. Because if you try and queue ranked, you're not going to find a match. You literally have to agree with the, entire, wow. the entirety of the community just going like a single day. And that afternoon, people are going to queue ranked. Otherwise, well, you're not going to find anything. Uh, Russia is not that dead, but it's pretty dead. If you want to play games like at a high level, at a competitive level, you are not going to be able to find anything. It's like, oh, you're a mastering player? Great. We're going to put you with two bronzes at like 800 MMR. You're going to be finding like two golds and a silver. So like these are the kind of matches that people have. So any PvP -er that takes themselves half seriously is going to be migrating simply because of the, the population difference and the excitement that comes with a new server, right? Russia was okay for the first year for PvP. The queues were there, but the game was not too popular in Russia in general. Uh, 
So the population died out after the season two update, it died out further. So it's it's their chance to start anew and to actually go to a populated server where you will have matches <laughs> and hopefully for more than a year. So most people are going to be shifting servers, even if it means playing a slightly higher ping. All right. Uh, someone was asking, um, how would someone have two of the same classes and uh, what are the advantages of playing two of the same classes? Um, I can easily answer that if or, or if any of you wants to. Please be my guest. Well, I'll take it up then. Well, there are a couple advantages of playing the same class. First of all, um, you can actually, for those classes that do have various builds, you can play the same class, but actually try both builds or different builds without actually, you know, buying additional multiple things on one character. Second of all, you can use gems on the same class, which it is a fair bit annoying, I'm not going to lie, but for difficult content, for raids that you only do a week, I think it's a legitimate strategy having multiple of the same characters because you can build one set of gems and just transfer them over. Let's say your first dead eye, for example, you're having two dead eyes, right? Your first dead eye is scheduled for Friday, so you're going to transfer all the gems on your dead eye for Friday. You're done with all the difficult content on Saturday. It's your second dead eyes run. Just swap them over so it's once a week. It's 10 items. Is it 10 items? I'm actually forgetting how many. No, there's more than 10 gem slots. Ignore me, but. Um, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's not the end of the world. And also having class engravings and engravings that fit your build could mean that gearing a second character is going to be easier. It doesn't mean that it necessarily has to be, but it can be. Omni, we look at a question for you or anyone else. Um, why should, this is my question based on this question, why should NA West players consider playing on East? What's the reason for that? Because uh, East would be more popular? Well, it seems like East is shaping up to be, I mean, clearly just based on Amazon's post of how many servers are already prepping for East versus the three they're prepping for West. It's almost like they're saying, we've done the math based on beta or alpha access or wh whatever data they gathered. And they have basically said, East will clearly be the most populated server in my opinion, that transfers over to having potentially a more um, lively economy where you're going to have a lot of trading because there's just with more players, you have more potential drops, more potential items, uh, more a, a shorter queue times potentially uh, for either PvP or uh, PvE content. Um, so there are a lot of advantages to having the more populated region. And it, it almost makes you feel bad for your brothers on the West side because you're like, okay, that's great that you're all starting, you know, with a hefty amount, but then how long is that going to last? And will it be a situation where West will eventually just get fused into East just because their, their player base dwindles, which we don't know what's going to happen. I hope West keeps on thriving. I hope West grows. I hope they add more servers. I hope that it's a, you know, like a, a miscalculation, but we don't know. Based, I'm just going based on what Amazon posted. They posted like seven East Coast servers and three West. What's so the you ping? Be, like, what's it for in, in US from East to West? I believe the ping difference. Uh, one of my friends is actually a, a West Coast uh, located player, and he was getting 60 to 70 on East Coast, which is not terrible at all. It's pretty and, nice. Why would you yeah. ever play on East then? Uh, for 30 ping when you can play on e on west for 80 and actually have a stacked uh, auction house, a stacked queue, a stacked everything, assuming what Lino said is right. Uh, so I see no reason why you would play in east. Sorry. Yeah, it all <laughs> depends on location. Yeah. Right. I mean, we've um, I've been playing with 160 to 180 on Russia and that's nearly intolerable, you know, so... Mm -hmm. 100 less than that should be more than manageable if you really want, you know, that crossover yeah eu right. players do play of around 60 60 ping that's the average that i get on russian servers so it'd be the equivalent of what if you're a european player on the russian server which is well, all right but why is the game not the popular better. in russia um because russia is just one country i get it it's like half of europe as a continent but at the end of the day it's simply one country um yeah i should so also russian the Rus sorry, the Russian gamers in general, the gaming population of Russia is just 
as a one big country, like, I don't know, France and Germany combined. So if it's just a release from for France and Germany, um, then of course it's not going to be popular, right? But no, people are playing there, you know, it's, it's okay. Yeah, I'd Any just like to add that, um, yeah. well, there are cultural reasons, you know, people just didn't take to, to Lost Ark or MMOs in general uh, in Russia. So, you know, we have like, there's also the whole issue of like publishers. So Meiru is not necessarily known as the nicest and the best publisher. They've been stepping up their game as of late, but they don't have a historically good reputation in the, the Russian community as a great MMO publisher. So that's something that also affected the popularity of the game. And also... A lot of people joke that, you know, Korea has been like the beta test server for everything else. And in a way, Russia is too. Uh, Russia, you know, started in season one back when Lost Ark was not doing too hot and was not doing particularly well. There was a period that a lot of people thought that Lost Ark as a game in general, even in Korea, was not going to last very long. So it, it released in Russia in a state that is very, very different from what we have today. Uh, we are getting the best version of the game in NA and EU. Russia did not have that luxury. Uh, Russia has gone through... You know, many different patches and many different changes in the game systems. Like I said, I myself stopped PvE in Russia after the Season 2 patch because I felt that they implemented it so badly that it just made me lose motivation. So that's the case that happened with a lot of players too within the Russian server that were Russian. So it's not popular for a variety of reasons, if we're going to be honest. And mm -hmm. most of which are not really applicable to NA and EU. Wilkie, any thoughts on server transfers? Why is this already important? Why are people asking this? Mm, I think for for the aforementioned reasons we had, if, for example, I said it doesn't really matter what kind of server you're playing on, especially if you're starting out on the game, you should just pick whatever server that is available to you. But at some point, you might find friends on different servers, or maybe you actually reconnect to other people that are like, oh, you're on the forums, I played game X, Y, or Z with you, or maybe you're in a Discord community, and all of a sudden, 80% of your old gaming community is playing on Kadan and you're not on Kadan or like on Trixion. So it could be important that later down the line, people that have been split between multiple servers by chance, on purpose, by sheer bad luck, whatever, do have the opportunity at some point to actually reunite with their friends. So I think it is actually, I wouldn't say it's super important, but it would be nice to see if they actually have this plan because I think the system supports it. It's just whether or not Amazon has this up their sleeve and be like, hey, you know, the first four weeks are going to be stressful, then there's going to be servers that are going to be populated, and there's going to be servers that are not going to be populated. How about we merge one of these, or we give people the opportunity to switch servers if they wanted to? So I think yeah, it is right. important, and um, it might just uh, release some of the stress people now have with, oh my god, which server do I have to pick? I think it's mm. definitely something that is going to be coming, because historically, Lost Ark has not had server transfers. But literally, as of the latest Korean patch that happened, you know, I think just this week um, or the week before, they actually added server transfer as an option. Uh, so they in Korea, they they should have server transfers, and I think there's a reason for that. And with you know Koreans also having certain issues with queues and certain servers and whatnot, especially with how quickly the game is growing there, and with the NA EU release that we're getting. Seeing the server transfer system that they got to KR be ported to NAU is something that either we may even have on release or it may be something that we'll be getting very shortly after. Mm -hmm. Do we expect Judgment Day on the 11th? Do we expect the end because of too many players coming to join free to play? Or do you think that, um, do you think there's going to be more players coming to join free to play? Or do you think that it you know, most of most of them have already found their specs. Absolutely. There, there's no way more people have actually shelled out money that there are free-to-play players. It's just the <laughs> nature of it, right? Yeah. As much as I would love to have more people actually willing to, to spend money on it for a better quality of a game, um, there's definitely going to be a huge, huge influx of people. And I do suspect that some of the servers, or maybe like the login servers, like for those of you who are a bit into tech, it's not just one server, right? There's going to be login servers, databases, and all that stuff. And I'm fairly content that the login servers may have issues. Maybe uh, character creation might be a bit crumbly or laggy or something. I'm sure we're going to see some servers being caught on fire, but Amazon did show in the past that they actually can handle server stress quite well. So mm -hmm. I'm content that they will manage to do it just fine. Mm -hmm. And not just I'll... the floodgate of players, it's potentially them taking down the server for reset on Thursday, and then all those who got removed jumping back in if they do a server reset. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's also we don't know if the... they're going to have a week one one. They, yeah, some companies it, on release, they don't have a server reset on week one, but we don't exactly, know. Exactly. Exactly. They don't need to have any server reset, right? They can just l let it be for another week. I mean, of yeah. course, you know, we want the server reset because of Abyssal Dungeons 340 and Daily <laughs> Quest. And, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. But uh, no, uh, it is what it is. So I think it's better, though. Is it better to, to, to jump into the head start to invest that $15, assuming you can afford it? For some people, it's a lot of money. I absolutely get it. But if you can afford it to just to have um, this time to maybe play with the veterans, I, I think the veterans are still going to be in 340 Abyss on Friday or whenever. Um, the new players yeah. come and get to level up. So I don't think it's that important to... Um... Will you guys go to lobby zones on the 11th just to just to wave to players, carry them through through Agilos's head and uh, uh, finish the objectives for them on the side to kill the totems and shit? I'll probably see them on some alts because I'm pushing multiple alts. Yeah, speaking about alts, what, uh, this is a good transition. Thank you, Omni. Uh, yeah. A good transition to to talk about another um, another topic that I wanted to ask you guys about. Um, seeing that now we're getting tier three straight from release, right? So there is there is much more to do on your main, on an active basis, on a daily basis. When is the time for alts? Because in my head, I thought no. that you do have enough time on a daily basis to quest with your main. Uh, you know, do your islands, do your story, do your little daily activities that you have um, in terms of uh, um, group PVE content. And then at the same time, if we get this knowledge transfer feature that boosts a, a character through, um, through 1 to 50, why not have an alt as well? Why is an, an, having an alt already bad because we're getting tier 3? I see only value in raising an alt, spending even 10 hours if we don't get the knowledge transfer, spending 10 hours to level him up um, because it's 10 hours. These quests, the story, the islands can wait. It's not like they're in a hurry or, or a weekly reset. So yeah. you tell me, when is a good time to have alt? Has it changed? from before now that we're getting tier three or hasn't it? Go ahead on me. You guys, you guys are the PV guys. So, cause to me, the ult <laughs> is going to be, I'm just going to level a bunch of characters level 26 and the AFK in front of the PVP board. So that's, uh, that's going to be Wait, my uh, life. <laughs> may, may, may I just, may I just tackle this question really quickly, Lino, before we get into the alts for PVE content, why are you leveling several classes to 26? I mean, don't you already have a class that you know you're going to play? Well, yeah, maybe, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Not really, I think, especially when it comes to PvP, because it's so accessible at level 26, I, I play like at least half a dozen classes anyways that I tend to flex. So while I may have some characters that I really like for PvE, I'm thinking it's either going to be Sorceress or, or Scrapper for me. One of these two is probably going to be my PvE main, question mark. But for PvP, you know, I'm going to be, be playing multiple characters. So, you know, alts are very valuable in that as well. So I, it's going to be how am I going to balance, you know, the push to a high item level as well as, uh, you know, leveling alts and focusing on them as well as just like playing and doing customs with friends and things like that. All right. So let's mm -hmm. go back to the PvE question. Uh, when, why, and um, has it changed? I mean, or you go ahead, Omni. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Okay. You're, 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 you're the PVE god. I'll, uh, I'll I'm not you. the PVE god. <laughs> wow. okay. Wilkie no, no. has no. been thrown <laughs> under the train. He's the PVE god. Okay. okay. So, um, I definitely think it has changed, but more so in the timing. Alts are still going to be. I don't like to say important, but they will still help you in your journey in Lost Ark for various reasons. Not only progress in terms of your main. But there's also various other activities that are easier to do if you have multiple characters. Since we now know that our end game is going to be the early tier 3 stages, being the Abyssal Dungeons, obviously the idea kind of creeps up. It's like, okay, ignore alts, just push your main as high as you can. I think pushing your main through tier 1 content is a feasible strategy. But I think as soon as people hit tier 2 content, which is going to be Phaeton or Jorn and then Phaeton, I don't think people are going to have a good time just trying to brute force their main unless they bring out the wallet to play. There's going to be so much stuff, so many gates in terms of materials, that 
at least I personally will definitely have at least one or two alts alongside my character before my main even hits tier 3. Whether you want to do the same pacing, whether you want to do it in tier 1, is more, I think, a personal choice rather than a strategic one. They will help you no matter when you start. They will also slow you down a little bit regardless of when you do it. But it's more about how soon do you want to invest into multiple characters? Maybe you also just like playing multiple characters. So I can see people getting level 50, do their first Chaos Dungeon, do their first Guardian Raid. I'm like, cool, I want to level another character. And it's perfectly valid. Somebody else might be, I want to hit Yorn first and then do a second character. So the, the possibilities are endless. I think the, the gist is really don't neglect alts. You will need them rather sooner than later, even if tier three is endgame. Uh, you were talking, Wilkie, about um, um, about the wallet uh, when you get to tier two. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe towards mid tier two, because there are you know tier two islands as well. And if you play with your character, you're gonna get some mats. But then, of course, later, uh, maybe after eight sixty, is going to get a little bit uh, more challenging to get continue at the same pace. So you're talking about the wallet. Um, do you actually think that there's going to be um, people in tier two? who will sell the bats to you as opposed to use that use it themselves so that you would be able even to use your wallet at least for the first couple of months. I, I think there will be some people because or from a strategic standpoint, you know that there are some oilers or whales out there that will buy materials to some ludicrous prices, even to absolutely abnormal prices, so-called early adopters, if you will, or the people that just really don't care about how much stuff will cost. So there is a, I guess, strategic value in pushing yourself into tier two and then kind of hitting the stop here or like like pushing down the brakes and be like, huh, I'm going to sit here comfortably farming tier two materials and put them on the marketplace because I know somebody with a big enough wallet might actually want to grab onto those. So you could farm like early gold, if you will, and maybe buy specific other things or just polish your alts up, focus on islands. Like I said, strategies are kind of endless. And obviously, this is just um, a theory, right? I don't know if people are actually willing to put down the money in tier two. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe they have to, maybe they don't have to, maybe they will go crazy and just like hammer their credit card, throw it as hard at the screen as they can. Um, they also, to make sure they also yeah. need to buy the gold first. Yeah, uh, of, well, of course. I mean, someone needs to buy their crystals. Crystals. Right? So someone that farms in-game gold already and is willing to buy someone else's crystals, which, by the way, at the beginning is going to be quite lucrative, I feel, because you buy the same amount of crystals with much less gold than in six months from release. So that's perfectly fine. So there's not going to be a shortage of that, I believe, because people are smart. Um, but in terms of mats, how many whales could you possibly uh, a, a pimp up with mats? If there's going to be one huge whale on, on, on Chadan, um, then that guy's just going to buy everything. It's going to be one player in tier three. Good for you. Uh, let's <laughs> wait for another three so we can do an abyssal. Um, uh, okay, so I, I have a couple of questions here that I wanted to ask you guys. Uh, what classes are you guys going to main? I'm going to main artillerist and then artillerist and then on my second account, another artillerist. So three. You guys go ahead. I mean, I've already answered that one, which is <laughs> going to be uh, scrapper <laughs> and sorceress most likely for PvE. Still trying to decide which one I want to focus on. Uh, but go on, Wilkie. It's, I see that you're prepared. <laughs> I, I don't think I have to say what class I'm going to be maining, but for those of you wondering, <laughs> I'm going to main the Deadeye, of course, because, uh, you know, I'm into the shotgun boom boom. And um, obviously, since I'm a male person myself, I'm going to be playing a male character. There you go. What about you, Omni? I am on the same boat as Wilkie, representing for the Deadeyes. That's going to be the first I make. Then I'm going to make a Paladin uh, to have my first main support. All right. Another question that I have, uh, could you tell us what rewards you can get from doing PvP matches? I can probably answer that one, I see. Um, when it comes to PvP matches, uh, there are two kinds. You have your unranked matches, which are going to be just uh, regular PvP points that you get. You get PvP tokens. You can use these tokens to buy uh, PvE mats to help you upgrade your gear, depending on what rank you are an uh, unranked has a rank it's a little bit weird depending on how much you play it doesn't really matter whether you win or lose how much you play within a week and how many points you get within a week will put you in a certain leaderboard 
And that means you can climb a few like unranked ranks, you would say, the commander ranks, or the gladiator ranks. Uh, depending on certain commander ranks that you're in, you get access to mounts, you get access to auras and some uh, titles and pretty cosmetics and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And then there are the ranked rewards, which uh, if you are master and grandmaster, which would be top 30 and top 100, or top 30 and top 200, if we have the, the Korean system, you would be able to, and over uh, 2200 rating, you'd be able to get some crystals, some blue crystals for the store. You'd get a title and you would get some cosmetics, like an outfit for your for your character. Master and Grandmaster would also get auras and everything below. It depends on what rank you are. You get different things like bronze gets nothing. Silver only gets the bottom. Gold gets the top and the bottom. Uh, Platinum gets like the full outfit, but no title, no auras, no nothing. Uh, one thing that I should add, though, is that as of the latest Korean season, they seem to have removed the outfits. So... Um, you're going to be getting maybe trophies instead for your stronghold, which is the housing system. So we're not actually sure whether or not we're going to have a system that will give cosmetics for ranked or whether it's just going to be stronghold items. So the verdict's still out on that. All right. Uh, someone's asking if you can play ranked with friends. No, you cannot. Dressing up your male character. This is a uh, poke jump uh, kind of strategy. So, of course, do not use your avatars on male characters. Uh, only on females. This is the rule in Lost Ark. Otherwise, you get uh, you get banged. Thank you for the ten uh, money, um, um, Asura. I really appreciate it. Someone was asking about the um, class popularity earlier. So for that, I'm gonna bring up my old, good, old, faithful uh, screen right here. So this was the class popularity during the closed beta test. Please remember um, that now people that maybe even played in the closed beta, have a lot more information about Lost Ark because there's literally 500 million uh, tier lists made by everyone on YouTube on what class is uh, doing the most boom boom and what class you should play Paladin and Bard, Koch Koch. Um, and then the popularity in the closed beta, as you can see here, um, was uh, Shadow Hunter. And then Summoner, Summoner was removed by the way, but I am guessing alongside with other fellow content creators that people people who did try, this is how this is classes that people created. Yeah, please remember that. This is not classes that people got to level 50 or decided on. They've just created them. Then Summoner was removed. This is no longer part of our launch roster. It's going to come later. So I'm guessing Sorceress is not going to be here, but instead on the first place, because God bless, everyone's playing a Sorceress or everyone's going to create a Sorceress. So far, the meme was that everyone should have a Berserker. Now... The meme is that everyone should have a sorceress. So sorceress is going to be absolutely popular. And then also during the uh, beta, many people created a Deathblade, a Gunslinger, a Berserker, a Paladin, which I'm very surprised. Good for you. Um, and then the least created classes were War Dancer, Gun Lancer, and Scrapper, right? Artillerist being also there, uh, but uh, I can understand why uh, this is here. Uh, many people don't want a handicapped pass when they hit level 50 on an artillerist. So uh, that's perfectly fine. War Dancer, I'm pretty sure that people just don't get it yet. And they will eventually and create more of them. Um, and yeah, what, what, what are your thoughts, guys? Will, will this list minus the summoner and replace it with the sorcerers, for example, will this list stay for the release as well? Mm -hmm. For the release, maybe I think, well, yeah, because I, I think a lot of classes are just going to be going to Sork simply because there was no real mage. So I think Sork is not just going to be as big as Summoner, it's going to be much bigger. It's probably going to be one of the, the, the biggest, most popular classes. If you're a mage player, you're probably going to be going Sorcerers. Um, as for the others, it depends. Cause like, as you said, it had so many different tier lists comes out. I feel like uh, Deathblade, uh, again, is like going to be one of like, the super, super popular ones. It's going to probably explode even more than it already is. And with supports also being relatively, uh, it's already in a pretty popular state, as you saw, you know, Bard and Paladin are actually like pretty middle, upper middle, right? So it's not doing too bad, but I think we may see even more of these. Um, but whatever we get on release is not what we're going to be getting post release, right? I think give it a month, give it a, two months, give it three months. People will start playing and actually understanding how these classes work. They will start getting their engravings. They'll figure out how they actually play. And then I think we'll be seeing a lot of people shift classes for those that maybe they don't sync with the play style or others that they found much more interesting. So we'll see this change very dynamically over the course of the coming months. Mm -hmm. Any of you guys? The, 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 what about the, the PVE god decided by uh, uh, all of us to, together? 
<laughs> what does he think? Uh, I think that's mostly correct because at the start, a lot of it is going to be the first initial few seconds or frames. For example, when I first saw a trailer of Lost Ark, uh, the, the one thing I still remember to this day where I got a little wet in my pants was when I saw Infighters, or the Western name is going to be Scrapper, launch into the air, vaulting herself up, using two dragons to come slamming down. That is such a crazily good-looking skill. And I do actually enjoy Scrapper quite a bit, but it's just not its not enough to have that one massively cool-looking thing because the rest of the class still has to click with it. So initially, people will play what they think is like, oh, I like the look of this ability, or I think I want to be a bit of a beefier character, or I play Berserker in every game. And then they're like doing a Guardian raid, like Uruno Lumerus. I was like, huh, it feels nice. And then all of a sudden they're like going for Argos Raid in tier three and they see like a <laughs> Deadeye doing doing triple backflips. Like, oh, this guy looks cool and he has shotguns to boot and a sniper rifle and I only have a sword. Maybe I want to play this yeah. class. So I think yeah, the change will definitely, definitely happen. Yeah, there's definitely a point where different classes unlock their potential and some classes unlock it fairly early on and others will unlock it maybe once they have a bunch of level three engravings and things like that. And I definitely see class popularity fluctuating a lot. Uh, I see a lot of popularity in the Paladin just based on how much people talk about it, how cool it looks, how the skins look and things like that. But um, as far as classes in general, Deathblade is definitely one of the most popular going into if you're a PVP oriented player. And then uh, as far as PVE is concerned, it's, it's a, it's it's gonna be mayhem. It, it's gonna that that bar is just gonna fluctuate. You're you're obviously gonna have the people that love the mage classes, but then uh, there's so many other classes like our our unspoken dead eye that Wilkie and I like that are considered extremely unpopular because of their skill ceiling and all that in both PvE and PvP. But I think if if one of the best tips I can give uh, beginner players is uh, piggybacking on what Lin said a while a while ago. Uh, at 26, you're going to unlock PvP, but at level 30, you also unlock Trixion, which lets you go in the training area. And that's one of the best things you can go into if you're still unsure about what class you want to play with. Get in a class, jump in Trixion, test out all the abilities. You can actually add stats, engravings, literally test almost like a pseudo late game build. And that's going to change a lot of people's opinions. You're actually going to go in thinking, oh, this is the class for me, everything about it. And then once you test it you might change your mind so okay uh, i also wanted to tell all of you that are watching and are new a little secret something that you don't know yet about yourself but you will find that out after falling in love with lost ark i can already tell that to you is that you are never ever 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 no matter how many jobs or if you have 11 kids you're never gonna just play one class it is the way of Lost Ark. Eventually you will make another class, maybe because you're a bit bored of your main, maybe because like Wilkie said, you see some other class that does some cool awakening skill or some cool skills in general, maybe because your friends are going to need a support or maybe because you're going to be so bored that you're not doing absolutely any neutralization damage on your bard. Maybe you want to try something else. Um, and you're absolutely going to play two classes and it's going to come very naturally to you. It's not going to be forced. You're going to want to do it. And uh, this is a little secret that I wanted to uh, share with you. Now, uh, let's. Uh, I have gathered a couple of questions right here. Why is um, the Gunslinger so much higher than the Deadeye? Mr. Uh, Gunslinger. Or dead eye, whatever you are. Okay. Well, the 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 debate answer is obviously because she has boobs, right? Yeah. Um. The the actual answer is, uh, here's the thing. Dead eye was always kind of like a little bit of an unpopular class, and it received quite a few buffs to be actually quite good these days. But once you have like a negative stigma on a class, it's kind of hard to to get lost of it. And there's still going to be people, there's going to be guides and things that have been said, written, posted, and some people will still find it. And Gunslinger, when it launched, was just, when it was released, the version was released, which was 10 times stronger than Deadeye back then. It was cleaner looking, it had better skills, it had better visuals, it had better combos, it had better awakenings, it had better engravings. And then you have like the, the poor Deadeye who has like, 
unchanged balancings, weird ass engravings that are just basically gluing your eyes to the buff bar because that's one of the stupid mechanics that I had to deal with in the past. And everybody made a gunslinger. In Korea, when gunslinger was released, it was like almost immediately one of the most top play classes similar to what happened with Reaper. Now this is kind of like shifting a little bit, but the damage, so to speak, has been done and people still are going to fluctuate towards Gunslinger. Wilkie, have you finished all of the content in game uh, on both Gunslinger and um, and Deadeye? No, my Gunslinger has not seen um, Balkan, so no Legion Raid Commanders, but everything else I have done on Wilkie, Gunslinger. Wilkie, can you finish all content in game on Gunslinger and Deadeye? Absolutely. Will people reject you in groups if you play Deadeye? Because you're not a gunslinger. Not if your character has proper engravings. If your character looks like it's being taken out of a secondhand shop and just slapped together randomly, people will not even take you if you're support or any good class. So as long as your character is being taken care of, you're fine. There you go. Perfect. Another question that I wanted to uh, quickly answer is the sharpshooter a viable DPS? Why is it so low? Sharpshooter, same situation as Wilkie mentioned with the Deadeye. Um, for very long, it was um, not very popular because it was maybe a little bit mistreated. At the beginning, they were doing quite nice in PvP content, but then with the introduction of many other let's say, better or faster or classes that could catch them, um, they weren't doing so well uh, as well. But in last year, they received a flat 20% buff on in the damage for all of their skills. And since that point, plus the group, group uh, chemistry that they have, um, it's a nice class. People maybe don't want to play Rangers in Lost Ark, and that's perfectly fine. You know why? Because there's so many exciting classes in the game um, that some class has to be um, at, at the bottom, right? Uh, another question that I wanted to uh, quickly send to you guys. Uh, did you see the Sorcerer's skin? Sorcerers will be placed 3, 4, not higher. Did you see that they actually removed the Chastity Belt um, from the actual Founder's skin? If you haven't, uh, then you should go check that out. Another question that I wanted to uh, answer, is there no PvP exclusive gear set? I would let Lino answer that, but it's a simple no. Um, there used to be, and gear does matter in GV GVG PvP, so you can have your PvE gear matter there for people who play Deon and care about PvP gear. That's perfectly fine. How many character slots do we have at start with Founders Pack? Six, um, well, actually seven, if you buy gold or platinum. Um, Another question. Sorry, guys. I'm just breezing through some questions. Uh, can artists support as much as Bard? Mm, man, that artist class is absolutely gorgeous uh, and amazing. And yes, it can. And lastly, one for you guys. Can we buy enough character slots to play all classes? At the moment, fixed on War Dancer, Sharpshooter, and Arcana whenever it comes out. And while you answer that, I'm going to get some water. All right. Who wants to take it? Go ahead, Omni. All right, so uh, as far as we know, uh, character slots, they haven't announced if they will be purchasable at launch. But if you purchase the Platinum or Gold Founders Pack, they come with a character slot expansion ticket. So I, I bought both, so I'm getting two. So I'll have instead of six starting slots, I'll have eight. But uh, if you guys know any information that I don't know, please share. I mean, I don't know any information that you don't, but it would be really strange if they release a game and it's like, by the way, we have, you know, in the character select screen, we have four right. pages. Is it four or five now? I think. What's the maximum I, I total think it's of four? Is there, I think it's four. It, 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 it used to be 18 slots, but they uh, increased it to 24. And I suppose we're going to have yeah. the path where we have 24 slots in total. Yeah. So right. with 24 slots total and 15 classes on release, and. They're most likely releasing a character slot expansion. Otherwise, we're just going to have, hey, by the way, we're going to keep these character slots locked and uh, you can't do anything about that. Yeah, I think that's going to yeah. be really strange. So yeah. it's likely that you can get far more than all the available classes currently. But keep in mind, we have 15 classes right now. Uh, there will be more classes coming along in the future, but 24 slots currently is enough for every single class. Mm -hmm. Um is it important to choose, speaking about classes, is it important to choose your main starting with uh, with uh, day one? And here, um, maybe um, whoever is going to answer, maybe you can also touch upon the fact that island quests are roster-wide. So whatever, and they're important in your progression through tier one and two, in your fast progression, let's call it like that. 
So how important is it that you would uh, give the game a try in Russia right now? You still have a week. Boost up maybe with $6 per class. Boost up to 50 Try them there. Um, how important is it to have your main starting with day one? I think uh, it's very important to, to have a, in my opinion, if you're going for the, pa the fast push, go with a very mobile DPS main. In my case, Deadeye and is, is going to be my choice because other classes like Paladin, Gun Lancer, not saying that they can't clear the content, they clear it a lot slower. So if you're going for one of those record time clears just so that you can get into what Saibo mentioned, which is the knowledge transfer, um, the quicker you get to 50, the quicker you get to uh, transfer that knowledge to another class that might take longer to clear that content. So that's my objective. I'm going to go on a Deadeye, clear it as quick as I can, transfer my knowledge to a slower class like my Paladin. What about the island quests, the ones that give uh, you uh, materials to progress through your gear, right? They give you a lot of materials, as we've seen in the closed beta that we yeah. had. There was a lot of materials there, and uh, it's important because they are they are account quests, right? A roster, yes. as it's called now. Um, yeah. You only get them on one character. So if you waste and you progress through tier one and two on a class that you might not necessarily end up maining, what are you going to do then? get all the way to 50 by just doing the group pve content from what i remember in beta those chests that you got from islands that gave you the the resources they were uh you it was possible to put them in the warehouse that shared with other characters so you don't have to burn through all of them right away just get as many as you need to push your character's gear and then save the others for those alts that you're bringing after as you're pushing your main create almost like a snowball effect where as you're pushing one and then that one leaves tier one, then now any leftover uh, tradable resources, your alts can use them. Okay. What do you think, Wilkie? Any thoughts on uh, on uh, the, the need of having a main chosen? Mm, obviously, if you do know what kind of class you're going to main, it's going to make your life easier. That's that's no doubt about it. But it's not the end of the world if you don't have the main selected or if you want to swap mains because the character that you progressed so far is still going to remain intact, right? You still can use that sad character to farm materials, to do dailies, to do whatever, and just basically everything you don't need or you can get on that one character, move it to your alt. Um, as far as the islands go, omniset it. You don't have to use all the materials on your main. So I would also do it and just like open whichever box that you really need. Because there's always going to be one material that you're lacking. And if you lack yeah. crystals, open a box that grants you crystals. If you lack shards, open a box that grants you shards. Don't just instantly yeet all of the materials away into one character. Also, for those of you who are a little bit more in-depth, the tower that you can clear has different rewards for the second and onward character. So your main character gets a lot of collectibles, cards, and all that stuff. But the second and third and fourth and so on character is going to be blessed with a lot of materials for the, from the tower. So you can kind of circumvent the problem that you only have islands once, but every other character is going to have the tower instead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, a couple of questions that I have uh, gathered again. Uh, f first one being about the artillerist. I, I didn't say it is super handicapped. What I said is that when you get to 50 amongst your awakening quest and your shield, uh, you also get a, a certificate uh, uh, with a handicap pass, right? You can park in handicap spots and all sorts of these kinds of things as an artillerist. <laughs> but I never said it's super handicapped. Every class in Lost Ark can finish absolutely every content. Artillerist is my main and I'm going to have three of them. Um, and because of that, I'm not going to shy away to tell you that um, the group uh, uh, buffs or the group debuffs uh, that actually the buffs that Artillerist provides is a neutralization buff. And potentially, if you cripple your damage, you can provide a shield compared to other classes which can provide something that maybe people want a little bit more. However, that doesn't mean you're going to be rejected to groups because as we kept mentioning throughout the podcast, it's much more important how your Artillerist looks. 
is he nicely taken care of? Do you have some engravings? Do you have some runes? Do you have a good build? Are you playing the mechanics properly? Because nobody cares to take a, 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 a death blade, which brings buffs that are much more valuable to the group than an artillerist. Um, nobody cares to take one a death blade that, 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 will, that will die or that is not properly uh, taken care of. So because of that, every single class and many other reasons, uh, every single class can do a, a, a great job. If you like artillerists, like I like artillerists, or maybe like Omni likes, I don't know why Omni is mentioned here, but regardless, if you like it, then absolutely play it. I'm going to play it and I'm going to love it and I'm going to do all the content with it. Um, so yeah, this is the answer to, to this. But of course, I do like to joke that they get a handicap pass because their group buff could be maybe a little bit, um, um, a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Another question that I have for you guys, uh, is it worth buying the extra founders packs rather than buying the dedicated character slot, ex uh, character slot, character expansion slot um, later on? Um, well, you do have six to start off with. I mean, are you going to like waste six slots? Man, you're planning to go super hard then. Um, but, but what do you guys think? I mean, if you're buying the Founders Pack just for a character expansion slot, you can probably just use that money, you know, the additional, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 dollars and just buy, I don't know, 10 more character expansion slots or something and you get that. So if you're buying it just for the expansion slots, don't. If you're buying it for all the other things and you like the character expansion slot that comes with it, then you might as well. But it's if they're giving us that as part of the Founders Pack, it's very likely that they'll have that available in store for purchase separately anyways. It's not something that is Founders Pack exclusive. It's something that right. yeah. all the other servers can buy anyway. So you just want character expansion slots, just buy them separately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another question for you guys, uh, at Korean chatter. Koreans are chatting that the Western launch is kind of weird due to early tier three release with no Argos. Any thoughts on that? Koreans talk about a lot of things because they really love to play Lost Ark at a very spreadsheety, very, uh, not shitty, just spreadsheet based <laughs> <laughs> um, um, level. They want to be extremely efficient. This is the gameplay that many of them enjoy in Lost Ark per se. Um, but I will let others give their thoughts as well. Is it weird? Weird. Is it weird that there's no Argos? It's weird, but at the same time, it's preventive of potential... Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, when you have a lot of gold generation happening at one... Inflation. inflation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's preventive of inflation, especially if you're going to have a lot of whales uh, just pushing through the content with their wallet and they don't want to create inflation issues. And we don't know if we're getting the, the patch that happened in Korea where it restricts gold earnings to six characters. So they've definitely in Korea had a, a long outstanding um, inflation problem. So I see this as a way of them preventing inflation from the get-go. Because Argos, as we know, you can start doing it at 1370 uh, gear score and it gives you a lot of gold even for part one so it if if they were to launch with that it could potentially create start creating a massive divide be between the people that reach punica and start doing argos daily and then they bring another alt and then now they're doing it on two characters so i i see it more as a a, a preventive measure as opposed to like oh we're restricting uh, the North American lead release from from experiencing this, mm -hmm. and also I believe that um, you, you know Argos um, um, Argos starts at an item level, which I believe that I or at least I hope that they're going to give all of these new players the the chance to to get through the game at a nice slower pace. By slower, yeah. I don't mean that us veterans are going to be utterly bored at end game. Personally, and I don't know about the others, but I'm curious to see what Lino, uh, what uh, Wilkie and Omni feel. Personally, even if we stay a few months with this particular release and assuming I am in tier three day one, I would still not get bored being in tier three in Lost Ark day one, assuming that would be possible, which is not, by the way. Uh, but, but just saying, I'm not going to get bored for the lack of content. The new players 
I would feel that they need first to learn the game, get a couple of basics, like Wilkie was saying, some nice engravings, some nice runes, maybe some gems uh, on their character before we get to this particular content that is a little bit tougher than an abyssal dungeon, uh, which we do have as our end game. So I feel that this without Argos is very good with tier 3 without Argos because otherwise it would be just a little bit too much like Omni said also from the gold perspective um, because you're gonna you would have in tier 3 more places to get gold from right now you still have more gold but you just have yeah. li limited places to get it from um, which means not so much gold which in turn means that other people might be able to catch up to you after you've been there for three weeks uh, some other guy some free to play guy a new person will will be able to catch up and and, and and also slowly learn the game um, before we get into this 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 meat of content. I really hope they take it slow. What do you think, uh, Wilkie, about this? I mean, it's like you said, being bored is kind of like only possible if you literally only care about Chaos Dungeon, Guardian Raids, and your daily quests. There is so much content to do in Lost Ark, and it's... Um, the cool and also kind of like a bad part is there's so much content that is not directly presented to you, right? The game doesn't really tell you that you should actually visit islands. It tells you about them, but after the initial quest where you get one island cleared, that's it, right? And there is like a lot of secrets. There are so many gimmicky islands, and I don't want to spoil it, but there's some really, really cool islands in the game where the developers did a lot of cool fourth wall breaks in it and stuff like that. But that's purely optional content. It will be greatly helpful to your characters and accounts progression. Similarly, you don't need to do field bosses. You don't need to do um, specific maps. You don't have to attend Chaos Rifts. You should, though. You should pretty much do whatever content you have the, the time for and that you can attend. Um, but it's kind of optional in a way that you don't really have to do it but being bored in lost arc is either un unless you really just swipe hard or you're only caring for like a fraction of the actual existing content mm -hmm. bikini island um i'm not gonna <laughs> comment on this but uh yeah okay um so another question that that we have um uh, for lino specifically man they they love that new mic huh uh, do you think Lost Ark will have an esports scene in NAEU? Uh, so this is not even a thing about thinking. is a is a very clear yes. We already have you know community run tournaments at the very least in esports. So the archives, the guys at Sage, were running a esports league for uh, Lost Ark in NAEU. This is going to be on uh, NAE NA West Europe. Uh, the word's still out about how we're going to be doing it for South America, how that's going to be working. But at the very least, for NAEU, we are going to be having a PvP league that's going to span over the course of the next year. We already have certain sponsors secured for it with cash prizes, with everything. It is like a proper tournament circuit. So, yes, uh, it's not even think. We are going to have one. Um, if you're interested, then do sign up for the tournaments when they come up. Keep an eye out for the archives, and you'll be seeing some very nice things from them very soon. All right. Another question um, that I have here for you guys. Um, can you can you even whale well your progression early on when there's a shortage of materials? We talked about this actually um, a little bit before. So um, the short answer is a little bit, assuming some people are going to take advantage of some other people who will want to pay a lot more um, for the materials than they are actually worth. Um, one more question that I have here. I was planning to play Holy Night holy night it's a paladin by the way for those of you who are new um, at launch as my first character what's the disadvantage playing a support character first rather than a dps well i guess that's uh that question came about from my comment about how they progress a little slower through the content but um yeah other than that uh supports are going to be necessary at all points of the game everybody wants a support on their party so if you're going to be doing like the early story dungeons, you can try the like as soon as you get to your first dungeon, you can try the matchmaking feature and see how quickly you're going to get in a party and you're going to be loved for being in that party. So supports just uh, as far as clearing content alone, you're going to have to approach it with a very different build. You're going to have to favor DPS spells as opposed to your support spells in order to clear like the bosses because I played Holy Knight in beta. 
And I definitely saw the difference versus when I've started with a DPS class, as far as clearing the content goes, but every class can clear all the content. There's no limitations per se. The only thing is that some might have a different approach to clearing at least the story content than, than others, but, and the, and the clear times might, might differ a little bit. Mm -hmm. A question for the PVE God Wilkie here. Uh, I know he, he, he wants to be a PVP God. So I'm going to ask this, uh, what, what are your thoughts on 21.9? Um, I mean, it's, I wouldn't call it a requirement because you don't need to use it. You can p PVP perfectly fine on a 16 by 9 resolution. I, in fact, probably PVP'd for a good two months before I actually realized that that's a thing. Um, I always had kind of like the feeling, how did people see me or what the hell happened until I did some research. And um, so obviously you're going to be at a disadvantage. You don't have to do it. If you are aiming to be competitive, I do think, however, there's no way to go around it because you're just going to put yourself at a disadvantage that unless you're like a 400 IQ giga brain, you will not be able to outmatch the disadvantage with sheer brains or skills. All That's right. right. I should add to that as well, um, really quickly. 21 by 9 is an option that Lost Ark lets you force. You don't have to buy a 21 by 9 monitor for Lost Ark. If anything, it can be detrimental. I have an X34P. It's a very wide monitor. So if I'm looking at that side of the screen, because I'm looking at something happening on my left side, my peripheral vision can't really see what's on the right side of my screen, which means I might get screwed up because of that. Um, in that regard, it may be better for me to have a high refresh rate 16 by 9 monitor, use the force frame by 9 option so I can have a clearer view of the screen than having the bigger monitor, which lets me see things bigger, but at the same time, I lose my peripheral vision because of that. So 21 by 9 has its advantages and its disadvantages when it comes to a monitor. You will need to force that option if you want to PvP competitively. That is mandatory, but you don't have to like swipe hardware and pay to win hardware if you want to PvP. Um, whether or not you play on a 21 by 9 or a 16 by 9 monitor, there are advantages and disadvantages to both. So it's just whatever you feel most comfortable with. All right. Also w worth mentioning that uh, the reason why Lino doesn't see both sides of his uh, uh, 21 by 9 is that he, because of immersion, and in Lost Ark, as you guys know or don't know, you cannot zoom into your character to immerse yourself in the world. So what he does is he comes really close to the camera, to the screen like this. And that's why he <laughs> needs to look uh, left and right so he can feel more immersed in PvP. Um, um, another question, when you're endgame, how long does it take to do all of your dailies per character? Not just quests, but dungeons as well. Well, the short answer is, it depends. The long answer is, or the bit elaborate answer is, I would say on average, it's going to take you between 15 to 30 minutes. That depends on various factors. Are you going to do it alone? Are your characters optimized? Do you have a fixed group? Like, if you have things like a fixed group, it's going to be much quicker than using the matchmaker because you don't know what kind of party you're getting into. You might have a poorly optimized party with four dead eyes in it, like to go extreme. Likewise, if you have a fixed party with a DPS and three different classes that uh, synergize very well, you're going to be able to do it faster. If the character is just barely at the minimum of the item level, it's going to take longer. If it's a little bit more over enchanted, it's going to be quicker. I did actually make a video. I know this is kind of like uh, shameless self-promotion here. Excuse me, Simon. Holy but... cow. Mute him, mute him fast. <laughs> mute it. Um, I did make a video where I showcased what, for example, my daily routine looked like. This is a fairly old video, but the point still stands. And um, like I said, I would say account for like 30 minutes on a more relaxed pace to do the daily Chaos Dungeons, two Garden Raids, and Una tasks. Um, you can always optimize on it if you want to, but I say... 30 minutes is like a very good estimate for most people. And if I may add, experience will dictate how quickly you clear some of the content too, because you can be well geared, you can be, you know, in a good party, but if you don't know what the mechanics of that raid uh, might be, you're going to, and you hit a wipe mechanic, you're going to wipe constantly. So look up guides if you're lost or keep throwing your brain against the monitor and, and, and see if you figure it out. Um, an interesting question. Um, what class do you guys like to have in your parties besides support? Uh, let, let's just all pick one class um, that we like to have. I wanted to ask you to for, for all of us to say it at the same time, uh, but that would be a bit cringe. 
so let's just go with that turn by turn. L Lino, you tell me in, from a from a PvP perspective, you are maining a scrapper and you are queuing for ranked. Besides I mean, a, besides a bard, what would be your preferred third in that PvP match? Uh, Deathblade. Deathblade is a very easy pick uh, for Scrapper specifically because uh, Scrapper is a class that has pretty slow burst when it comes to PvP, very long combos. The attack speed buff that you get with um, Maelstrom from Deathblade is massive. So if I can get that on my team and work with double melee as well, which syncs very well with Scrapper, then I'm definitely going to be going for that. Wilkie? Are you're we playing, talking? Uh, you're playing a Dead Eye. Okay. Are, or are and, we talking uh, PvP or PvE? We're like, no, you're you're in PvE. You're the PvE okay, guy. Okay, I'm, I'm in PvE. Yeah. <laughs> um, so okay, I, I have a bard in my team, um, and I have a dead eye. So ideally, I'd have a warlord in my team, simply because that means I will get to use my back attacks more often. Because typically, the warlord is on the opposite side as I am, so that makes positioning a bit easier. And then it's either going to be a lance master, but since we don't have lance master on the western servers, it's going to be either striker. Or word answer for their crit buff. All right, we only we're, we're only allowed to pick one, regardless if PVP group if PV groups are four. So you go Omni, pick one. You're you're playing what? You're actually the support. <laughs> well, well, if I'm the support, if you're putting me in that situation, I would want uh, DPS. No, because main. you are right. You're you're paladin well, main or no? Well, I actually consider me the hybrid of these two. I play PVP and PV, but okay, let's say okay. I'm in a PV environment. But um, but are you maining a paladin, or did I get it wrong? I'm I was maining Deadeye, but paladin would be my main support. So right. I'm okay. Let's let's go. Let's go. Uh, wait. Wilkie has already said. Yeah, Wilkie already said. Uh, talked about Deadeye. So yeah. If, if Wilkie said Deadeye, fine. I can do the paladin route. Yeah. So if I'm a paladin, I would want. In this case, there's no one DPS I want more because I'm the one that they want to have on their party. So what I would actually want is all three DPS to have synergies that are not duplicates of each other so that we can optimize party synergy right. that way is, is a general answer that i can give all right you don't care if you have range dps or melee dps some some range guy sitting like uh, 50 meters away well wilkie wilkie took the gun lancer the gun lancer is a great uh dps that also flexes support but then also i actually consider your main the the artillerist he has a defense break in his turrets. He has a team party shield. So he can supplement some team party synergy and buffs that if I miss mine or if I'm not playing my my uh, support class properly, you can supplement some of that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and for myself, I'm maining an artillerist and I absolutely, besides a bard, uh, I absolutely want a death blade as well. Um, now... What other questions did I have? I did I have any other questions? No, I didn't have any other questions. So uh, let's. Um, um, is there a synergy table? Someone can link a synergy table. Mm, yeah, there is well, one. But what about you, Saivo? What's what class would you have in your party? I, I already said. I, I said I, I'm maining artillerist, and besides a bard, I also want a death blade. Absolutely okay. no question about it. The the if faster I am, yeah, <laughs> the faster I am as an artillerist, the better it is. Um, Okay, I was going to cool. say, if we're doing shameless plugs, I actually have all the synergies in my class breakdown spreadsheet. I can link that if you guys want. Yeah, I'll link it in the chat, actually, Omni. That, that, that would be good. That would be very right. nice. Okay, so um, I'm not going to ask you guys for plans for launch because um, actually, why, why wouldn't I ask you for plans for launch? Uh, we already talked about them, but let's, let, let's do a quick recap uh, now towards the end of, uh, of this uh, lovely podcast. Thank you so so much, guys. By the way, for joining us, very sweet of you uh, to come listen, to come show, uh, give us your questions. Um, I didn't answer some of the questions because some of the questions we cannot answer because of various reasons. Uh, so uh, let's do a um, let's do a um, plans for launch, like quick plans for launch. You you start the game and you wait in a queue. After that, what comes after that? All right, that one's an easy one for me. I'm just going to make a gazillion characters all with different names so I can you know, get the name reservation um, and probably just try and no life a character to 50 as soon as I can. Um, try and make use, I guess, of the, uh, I hopefully, smaller queues that we're going to be getting in the, the early access period. And, um, and then after I boost character to 50, 
I may start just like juggling and unleveling some ults there. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how PvP is going to be going because we don't have a ranked season for the first month, uh, usually like month to month and a half of the game being released. Uh, so maybe I'll do enough PvP just to get through the G tutorial ranks and then I'll, I'll maybe do do customs with some friends while leveling characters and trying to up my item level on the side. Mm -hmm. Wilkie? So... First of all, of course, hit level 50, then clear out islands, see how far I can push it. And after that, like I mentioned earlier, if I hit the, the wall or the point where I know I can't really progress my main as fast as I would like to, start creating one or two additional alts. All right. Omni? Uh, so I'm going to approach it like Saibo hates uh, in a spreadsheet approach. I'm going to optimize my time as much as possible week one. I'm going to rush 50 with a fast class, uh, knowledge transfer, a, a slow class, and then I'm going to make possibly one or two more alts and transfer their knowledge to other two classes. So I, I'm in the boat of I'll take the hit in slowness by focusing on alts first for snowballing through the content by having more potential farming sources available. By having more alts, I can farm more resources, push multiple ones through the content, so on and so forth. All right. And uh, as for me, I would like to level up an artillerist if uh, we get to 50 and start, start doing the lovely, amazing gear progression for tier one through questing, story, whatever else. Um, is needed there. That's my plan to get the artillerist. And then after I get that artillerist and after I do my daily things, I would absolutely love to get another character on a different account again to level 50 so I can play more of the game, do more of this loveliness and um, hopefully be able to share alts, boost one character faster um, into, into uh, tier 3. I'm not sure about the second account thing because there might be actually very big queues. So... Uh, you know, trying to log out completely and log into another account, uh, different account that might not be viable, but I still want one. Uh, yeah, different account. Yeah, long story short, don't mind me. Just this, like, don't do as as I do. Do as uh, Lino does, Wilkie and uh, or or Omni, depending which strategy you wanna you wanna you wanna do for yourself. Um, right. I wish you guys lots of love. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. My guests here, Wilkie, Omni. And uh, Lino, you can find them in the description of this video. There is, um, There are links to their channels there in the description. Very nice people. Um, I myself will see you tomorrow with a video. Um, they will also most likely create videos, stream. Uh, please follow them. Subscribe to their channels because they will have a lot to teach you. Uh, anything that you guys uh, want to wanna say? Anything that you want to shamelessly plug once more? They keep asking me for the link, so I keep linking it. I just linked the shorter version of the link. Mm. I think it's filtered out because of the, the chat, so who knows, maybe. Ah, yes. Get a ball, maybe. Saibo, uh, you should, I, should I send it? Yeah, I'll send it to Saibo. Here you go. Here's the yeah. short URL. Where is it? Ah, it's right here. Okay, I'm gonna send you the I'm gonna send you the link, guys. I'm gonna send you the link on on YouTube specifically. I apologize. See, only I can post links. Did I send you other links as well? Uh, I don't know if I did. Uh, look, here's another link. This is the spreadsheet with guilds that are joining EU and NA South America as well. Um, yeah. Uh, why two accounts? I'm not gonna answer this question now, but I will answer it if you come join my streams. I also stream here on YouTube. Uh, Wilkie streams on Twitch, Lino streams on Twitch, uh, Omni streams on Twitch. They create videos as well. Very nice guides. Uh, so highly advise you watch them. Thank you again, guys, for watching. I really appreciate you. And I will see you next week. Next week, another podcast, by the way, on Saturday, probably next week. We'll see. Um, I wish you lots of love. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Take care, guys. Take care, guys.